Good morning. Welcome to today's lesson on section 5.7. Uh, if I seem a little jittery this morning, that's because I'm just so excited for uh, the Stanford Oregon game. I can barely sit still, so hopefully you guys are too. Anyway, let's get started. So section 5.7 is about something called the fundamental... Oh, wait one second. We're using red today. For the Stanford colors. Here we go. This is about the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now it seems like a very basic thing because you guys had algebra one, but here's what the theorem states. If a polynomial of degree n or actually let me rephrase that <laughs> if a function of so just show you I'm just totally distracted today if a function is a polynomial of degree n, with n being greater than zero, then the equation f of x equals zero has at least one solution. in the set of complex numbers. Now this definition is pretty confusing. So this is the formal definition of it. Here's Mr. E's definition. It really states this, the total number of zeros, real or imaginary, doesn't matter, equals the degree of the function. That's essentially what the formal definition is stating. So for example, let's see at x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1 this will have four solutions, real or imaginary. I don't know what the solutions are exactly for that, but I do know there's going to be a total of four solutions because the number of solutions will equal the degree, real or imaginary. Now, how many real solutions you, you could have, it all depends. But let's try an example. I'm going to try to keep this uh, lesson short. I have a conference to get uh, going to, and of course, get ready for the game tonight. Uh, let's try this one. Find all zeros of f of x equals x to the fifth minus 4x4 plus 4x cubed plus 10x squared minus 13x minus 14. This is a big one. But I'd like to give you a more challenging one so that when we do the classwork on Monday, it won't be too bad. So here's the deal. We first find the rational zeros. So I kind of have to change the color just a little bit, but I'm not going to use green. So we'll go black. Sometimes Stanford uses black colors. Uh, so P over Q, remember that? You guys did that for classwork on Friday while I was gone. You take all the factors of your constant terms, divide by all the factors of your mean coefficient. So your possible rational zeros are these. And we keep our fingers crossed that at least one of these will work. So let's try 1. 1, negative 4, 4, 10, negative 13, negative 14. 
So using synthetic division, we'll test one to see if it works. One, multiply it, add, multiply it, add, multiply it, add, multiply it, add. Oh, we're SOL. Doesn't work. I'm not going to elaborate what SOL means, but I think you guys get the point. Um, let's try another one. Let's try negative one. Bring the one down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multi multiply, add, multiply, add, bingo. So negative one's definitely one over zeros. So now we got this. X to the fourth minus five X cubed plus nine X squared plus X minus 14. We do the same thing again. It's still going to be the same as before, the P and Q's, the uh, possible rational zeros. I'm not going to try 1, because 1 didn't work the first time, so why would it work this time? Negative 1 could work twice, so let's see if that's the case. If not, then we'll try 2, and negative 2, and so forth. 1, negative 1, negative 6, 6, 15, negative 15, negative 14, 14, 0, cool. Negative 1 works twice. There's actually a way you can tell graphically if a zero will work twice. We'll talk about that on Monday because it's kind of hard to show right now without having a calculator. At my dis um, or I do have a calculator at my disposal, but I can't really show you what the calculator is doing unless if I show it to you in person. So now one works. So now we have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x minus 14. Maybe one could work three times. Let's try negative 1 again. If not, then we'll try 2 and negative 2. And again, I'm not going to try 1 because 1 didn't work the first time. Negative 1, negative 6, 6, 15. Oh, oops. So someone is not paying attention. I'm doing the same one over again. Alright, told you I'm just like super excited for today. Okay, let's do this again. Let's use the right coefficients. 1, negative 6, 15, negative 14. Bring the 1 down, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, that doesn't work. So, let's try 2. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Cool. So 2 works. Now we've got x squared minus 4x plus 7 equals 0. Now this is not factorable, so if we do quad form, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You get 4 plus or minus square root of negative 12 over 2 which would be 4 plus or minus uh, 2i root 3 over 2, which reduces to 2 plus or minus i root 3. And so those are our five answers. We had negative 1 twice. So we say negative 1 with multiplicity of 2 because it shows up twice. 2, and 2 plus or minus i root 3. Now the graph, actually I can show you how the graph looks. The graph will look something kind of like this. Where it bounces off 1 and crosses 2. So, whenever you have a bounce, That's multiplicity of an even number. So it means that the zero might show twice or four times. Etc. And if it crosses it, that's a multiplicity of an odd number. 
So the zero may occur once. three times, etc. And of course, we don't see 2 plus or minus 5 root 3 because it's imaginary. So you can't just think, oh, this just has two zeros. It actually has five zeros. Just the negative one shows it twice, the two shows once, and you have two imaginary zeros because we have a degree of 5. Okay. Let's do um, number 2. And now I'm done. So, let's say you're asked to do the following. Um, write a polynomial function of least degree that has rational coefficients lean coefficients of 1 and the following zeros and let's say our zeros were um, 4 and 1 plus root 5 so, when we write this, we would start by doing this. f of x equals definitely x minus 4, and definitely x minus 1 plus root 5. But then there's a problem. If you FOIL this, you're going to have a radical as one of your coefficients. But you're told to have a rational coefficient. Radicals, like there are non-perfect squares like root 5 or root 6, whatever, are not rational. Remember, a rational number has to be a ratio of two integers. So, foiling right now is no good. Since we'll get root 5 as a coefficient. Root 5 is not rational. So, basically this is kind of like um, another theorem. And here's the theorem states. This is called the complex or, sorry, this is called the irrational conjugate theorem. So conjugate, uh, we've talked about before, if a plus root b is a zero, so is a minus root b. Same could be applied to complex numbers complex conjugate theorem. If a plus bi is a zero, so is a minus bi. Because that way we get rid of radicals or imaginary numbers. bracket x minus 1 minus root 5. So one minus root 5 is also a zero if you want rational coefficients. So that way the radicals can go away when you FOIL. Now if you want to FOIL this FOIL now is good, but can be labor intensive. I could actually work out for you, but I have to get up to San Francisco right now for a conference. So let me show you a better way.
And I like this stuff because you can be really creative here. So we know we have x equals 4, right? Also, x would equal 1 plus or minus root 5. So basically what we're doing is we're going to work backwards. And here's how we do it. When you have an equation, you solve it, your end result will be x equals 4 and x equals 1 plus or minus root 5. Now what you want to do is get it back, with the solutions, get it back to the factor form. x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 1 equals plus minus root 5. So I'm just working backwards. I'm done on the left side, but here, now we can square both sides. We square both sides. x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 5 x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So now we have this. x minus 4 times x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 4x plus 16. All that being equal to 0. Work it out. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 16 equals 0. Or, we can just say f of x equals all that. And that would be your answer. So that concludes the video for today. Have a great weekend. Go Stanford, go Niners, and I'll see you guys Monday. And you'll be able to know if the team's won, if I'm happy or sad. Or if I'm kind of in between if one team wins, one team loses. But let's hope both teams win. All right. Have a great weekend.